Well, we are now recording. You want to get off? OK. Uh, welcome to the April 6th uh, IPFS All Hands. Uh, Dewey is going to start us off by talking about a uh, meetup, virtual meetup. All right. So our friends at matrix.org matrix uh, are organizing a virtual meetup. So this is a kind of meetup that everyone can join, and they can join from anywhere. The title of the meetup is Open Tech Will Save Us. Um, and there will be multiple talks. Um, we will have Matthew uh, to, to talk about Matrix and what they have been up to uh, with regards to using Matrix and multiple use cases and how it works and so on. Uh, we'll have Saul Ibarra Correche. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing this incorrectly. I'm so sorry if you watch this recording uh, to tell us about how, about Jitsi and how Jitsi. Uh, has been growing rapidly and how GC works and how GC enables like peer-to-peer -peer video calls. Uh, I'll also be speaking um, and I'll be introducing the Gossip Sub. Um, Gossip Sub is a, a router of the PubSub, sorry, is one of the PubSub implementations uh, that are, is available for the peer-to-peer PubSub. And we have been doing a lot of work to make it more resilient, to make it more robust to attacks. Um, you can consult all of these new updates on the p.1.1 spec. Uh, and yeah, I'll be introducing that and explaining how it works. Uh, it's going to be fun. And then last but not the least, we will have one more person from the Matrix community, Valere. Uh, we will present on UX patterns and how to provide a good uh, UX uh, for users that have to deal with keys so that they can have end-to-end -end communications. So yeah, as I said, like this is a free meetup. Everyone is welcome to join. Uh, you have the time zones here. It's 5 p.m. OTC or check the other times uh, depending on your area. Um, and you can sign up to attend uh, on the, their meetup.com. And yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, who is joining this meetup? I know I, <laughs> okay, you have a few folks. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's it. <laughs> Question from Andrew in the chat. Is it going to be recorded? Ah. Um, mm -hmm. There will be a live stream. And typically, when there is a live stream, it means that there is at least a recording done. Uh, it doesn't say if they are going to then republish the recording, but I'll, I'll ask. Um, oh, I think it's safe to assume yes, but I guess. Uh, I'll ask anyway. But you know, better safe than sorry. If you join, then you don't miss it. Awesome. I've shot an email off to um, Oliver and I see you Stephen, but um, I do not know whether it will be received in time. Yeah, I tried picking him on IRC, but he's not on, so. Fallback options. Well, any other agenda items? Awesome demos. Alan, save us with an awesome demo of the Hydro Booster. Where, oh, Alan is here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm here. Uh... I can tell you about them, I guess. It's hard to demo. It's not really a visual thing, but I can show you some stats. You do have graphs, if people are up for that. OK. Uh, graphs are well, awesome. Let's, let's do it then. Um, let me just quickly pull up a few. Uh, <coughs> OK, here we go. Right, first of all, share, share screen. Uh, right, can everyone see my screen? Okay, uh, this yeah, is the yeah. Hydro Booster project. It has uh, an awesome logo. Um, and Hydro Booster project is a extension of something we already have. We have um, a, a kind of a, a few DHT booster nodes um, that are uh, around that are in the DHT that are aiming uh, at improving the quality of service of the DHT. Um, 
And so the Hydra booster is a uh, is an extension of that, where it is uh, it is essentially a multi uh, multi multiple node uh, thing, <laughs> uh, where we have many um, many lippy to uh nodes, DHT nodes that are operating in the DHT. Um, but the key thing is they share the same um, share the same data store. So uh, when people ask one of these nodes, or when uh, when peers in the DHT asks one of these nodes for some information, then it has uh, it it can share that information between other nodes. So if other nodes have found out about that information um, previously, then uh, they all have this shared kind of uh, understanding, um, and that's why it's a hydra because it has many many heads and it has one big belly full of uh, full of data. And the whole idea with uh, having this uh, lots of nodes in the DHT is to reduce the number of hops because when you try and get stuff out of the DHT, you often have to hop uh, from node to node trying to find the thing that you're looking for. And if we if we can insert a node at some point in that hop in that uh, in those hops that has lots of information about um, about things that are on the DHT then we can reduce the time it takes to query the DHT for information. Um, so that's, that's super cool. Um, the other thing about the DHT boost, uh, the Hydra booster is that uh, we've, uh, we've added a, um, a method of generating peer IDs such that they are evenly spread around the DHT previously the old DHT boosters were generating random peer IDs and there's no guarantee that we like they are, um, they are nicely nicely placed in the DHT. So, lot like when you um, when anyone on a DHT queries, uh, they might not run into one of these hydro boosters. Uh, hydro boosters. So, this we're trying to address that. So, this is, these are the hydro boosters. What we have at the moment is we've deployed a bunch of them. Um, there are five hydras, um, and we've named them. We've named them. Uh, I don't know if you can see see this bit, uh, but this is uh, a Sybil bubbles. Uh, Chumpy, Domino, and Euclid, and each one of those guys has a different amount of heads. We're just testing them out at the moment, but you can see uh, on this graph that uh, uh, Alice Sybil has 25 heads, Bubbles has 50 heads, Chumpy has 100 heads, Domino has 150 heads, and Euclid has 200 heads. So it's pretty rad. And on this graph up here, we've got the current uh, current connected peers. So this is across all Sybils and all Hydras, the total connected peers. We're rocking around 600,000 connected peers uh, in the DHT network, which is pretty cool. And then we can break it down by each, uh, each uh, Hydra. Um, and then we've got a nice little drop down here and we can actually select a particular head of the Hydra, a, a Sybil, that's what we're calling it, um, of the Hydra. Um, to further narrow it down, which is kind of cool. But you can see that obviously the ones that have more heads have more uh, total connections. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Rooting table size is a similar sort of thing, but it's the, um, it's basically, if you know anything about the DHT, it's the K bucket. Well, in our case, it's the, um, it is the K bucket uh, where peers are placed uh, and there are many of them in there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the, so this, this graph just here shows the unique peers. So it, this is, um, you've got to take this a little bit with a pinch of salt because e each one of these could, they could have seen the same peers essentially, but this one at the top, this like weirdly bubbles, who doesn't have as many heads as Euclid has seen more unique peers in the DHT, uh, which is kind of fun. And that, so he's seen around, well, uh, what is 31,000 unique peers in the DHT, which is cool, which is not, it's not everyone, I guess, but um, yeah, CPU usage ticking along. Uh, provider records, uh, we've currently got around 8 million in the store um, for Euclid, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm currently working on a feature whereby Hydra Sybils will actually, when, when they're asked if they have a provider record for a particular CID, um, if they don't have it, then um, the Sybil is going to actually proactively go and fetch that record so it does have it for next time. 
So that means, so what, I, um, what, what I'm imagining I'll see uh, soon is that we'll have many, many, many more provider records in the store. Uh, so that's, that's good news because people, uh, because then we'll be able to respond to more queries uh, a lot easier. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the rest is kind of like node monitoring or virtual machine monitoring you know, memory, which is memory per connection, which is, which is pretty low, which is great. Uh, CPU usage, uh, sorry, memory usage. Uh, we, that's surprising. Like considering we've got like thousands and thousands of connected peers, we we kind of got we got around ten to fifteen on the on the biggest node we've got. Um, that can go up to like twenty right now. But you know, the like it's not it's not run, it's not something that like what's really cool is that we've got. It's just like it's running on Google. Cloud, it's running on Kubernetes. We've got a single VM hosting two uh, two hydras, um, so we've got three three VMs, two hydras on each essentially, um, and each one of those hydras is running like five hundred IPFS nodes essentially, uh, which is kind of cool because but you can just do that, you know. Uh, right, just go to sort my phone because my mum has decided to phone me while I'm doing this call. Great. <laughs> uh, so yeah, open file descriptor is not very many, it's all good. And uh, you can see that we've got, we're spending, probably spending too much time uh, with garbage collection. That was at 10% um, previously, but I've lowered that um, recently by around 2% by the looks of it, which is kind of cool. Um, but that's Hydra uses and that's the, that's the control, the, uh, the Grafana we have for, um, for monitoring them, like the, um, the, the one of the, Good things about this is that this project has now, like we've got proper ownership for it. Uh, we've got these metrics, which I'm showing you now, which we didn't previously have. Uh, well, I mean, we had like regular kind of node, like our VM monitoring stuff, but we didn't have this insight into like the, you know, the, the unique peers and the routing table size and the, you know, stuff like that. So, um, so we're, 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 um, it's, it's in theory, hopefully going to be much better uh, than the current, version and um, I think that's probably about all I have to say off the <laughs> off the top of my head <laughs> without preparing. Um, uh, Stephen has a question. 10% GC is a guild GC or provider record GC? This is the, yeah, this is the Go. Um, it's, hang on, it's, it comes from Go, Go Memstats, the CPU fraction. This, so this metric that you get from the Prometheus thing. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it's everything, I think. Do, do, do. Uh, Tell us what's next. What's next? Well, um, okay, so I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm working on um, getting the uh, Hydra nodes to proactively fetch records that it doesn't have, so that we'll have more records to serve to people. Um, what is next? I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't think of it. Oh. Should we be? Should we? Should we be running hydras? To oh, should other people be running hydras? Um, ideally, no. Like we want to be. Like the thing is, if it, if it could help your net your network, then I guess you could. Um, we're running them to ensure that all of the IPFS network has really good, uh, really good DHT response times. Um, and uh, and stuff that that yeah you should you sh like unless you've got like a, a big application with thousands and thousands of users and you've got your own um, implementation of the DHT or like um, version of the DHT then then no I wouldn't expect you would, you'd have to. Well, so I mean, like if you want to help out, yes, but not yet. <laughs> yeah, it's like once once it's all stable. If not now, all, when? Then, yes, actually, <laughs> uh, we will tell you. <laughs> I, I think I think part of it ends up being if you expect other people to run it, then the operations stack that other people run may be helpful in defining how it gets built. That's the current situation I find myself in with Go IPFS. It mm -hmm. wasn't never designed for um, server, server, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and literally every single blockchain I've ever worked with as well has been built for kind of half-assedly run it on a developer desktop. 
So the yeah, well, I guess was designed as like a desktop app. So the the either booster actually like um, giving extra praise to Alan. Actually, the way it is deployed is all commented on the repo itself. Uh, so actually, if you could go there and just like read those docs and I like, tell us if it, those make sense. Like if if you by reading those docs would be able to deploy it yourself, that would be like, a great piece of feedback. Um, uh, the the TLDR is like if you you should like run on our address address nodes. Essentially, like until we have the next version of YPFS release, until we update Hydra to use that next version, uh, until we, we finish all the steps, because like Hydra still has some features features that we are working on. Perhaps not. Like you will not get any significant uh, result out of it. Uh, that said, Hydra is designed as kind of like a a service to augment the quality of service, or as a um, as a, a tool to augment the quality of service of the network, and so. Anyone can run at Hydra, um, and that should only increase the quality of service of the network, right? And so if, if for some reason uh, you think that this, the network is not good enough, you, you can like run more Hydras. That said, we are also like going to be proactive about it and like see as the network expands and, and shrinks and kind of like adjust the number of Hydras that we have running. Um, but like from the beginning, from the design phase, we wanted to have a node that could provide this service augmentation without hard coding any piece, um, without like having to tell IPFS nodes dial to the specific node. That's why Hydra has like so many heads because it, it just like has a very broad coverage of the content address space. And so anyone can run it um, and they don't have to ask others to rely on, on their Hydra nodes. The network itself will just benefit as a whole. So what I heard was, yes, if you'd like to help but it's in rapid development, so things might change. Be prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd expect, I'd expect that um, if you're, if you're, if you want to help out with IPFS in general, then yeah, the, absolutely run them. Like we're we're running them, but because we want to help everyone who's who's on the IPFS network. But if you're building your app specifically on IPFS you're probably not focused on making the network a whole lot better for everyone in the network. Uh, you just want it better for your app. And, and this is not, not that this is like help everything. Um, but if you are willing to, um, to uh, kind of donate resource towards that goal, then um, absolutely. Yeah, that would be rad. So, um, hi, um, I have um, a question, uh, Alan. At some point, you said that um, this existed before Hydra, uh, but um, the extra heads were not e um, equally split around the hash space, right? Is that yeah. correct? Whereas Hydra does that. In the in the peer IDs that it generates for its heads, it uh, it makes sure that they are. They, they are balanced, so they don't appear that, so no two heads uh, end up in the same bucket. All right, okay, okay, now I see, okay, okay, now I see, because uh, I was trying to see, you know, given that there are many hydras, how is that, how do you collectively split the hash space between them? It's only for the peer IDs that those hydras are, are serving, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's just to avoid like putting two hydras basically next to each other. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So it could be some optimization there. Probably. Yeah. I, yeah. So okay. we've, at the moment we've got, um, we've got multiple hydras, uh, and the peers that they generate, the peer head, the heads that they generate are balanced for each, like between hydras, but not uh, for, for each hydra, but not overall. So what ideally we kind of need like is a service, which is like, give me, like that remembers peer IDs that it's generated and keeps them balanced for all of the hydras, so that all of the hydras get spread like a proper spread. Because um, yeah. at the moment we might have one hydra which is spread nicely, but then another hydra might overlap that uh, instead of also being spread nicely. So, um, so there's improvements to do, and that's kind of on the on the on the roadmap. But yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, that was my question. Okay. Yeah. Very good.
Apologies um, if I explained this not very well. I, I obviously didn't prepare. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. And like the, the RFC and the Remy actually do a, like a, a really good job at explaining things. So if you like, yeah. want to check it out. Um, and, and like, again, this was not a planned talk. And so we are still like finishing some details very close to the end, but like still finishing some details. So expect Alan to give a proper prepared talk in the future. Um, Matt brought up a good question, which I, I'm not remembering at all if it was like any specific reason other than being like a, a nice number. Maybe Steven knows the answer or someone, maybe George, if he's here, oh, he's not here. Um, why do we typically give 2000 connections um, or we typically create a 2000 uh, connection pool for IPFS nodes? Why, where, where does that number come from? Uh, well, 2000 doesn't really come from anywhere. Uh, yeah, the, right. the typical number should be um, about log the size of the network times 20, uh, which is the bucket size in Gnemlio. <clears throat> uh, so log size of the network times 20 is just like it's about the number of buckets you expect to be full. I think usually this is around at most 200 peers. Uh, if you have 200 peers, you should be good. Uh, the 2000 just means that like mm -hmm. basically like uh, connections are like they cost you in terms of resources, but not too much. Um, and it's more expensive to recreate those connections than to just like keep them around. Um, so we keep, we err on the side of like keeping more connections because it means like if you need to connect to the future, like you're already connected. <clears throat> if you ask a random bit swap, like if you make a bit random bit swap request and you don't know where some content is, there's a chance that they'll have the data you're looking for already. Um, yeah, so that's usually why we, like, we try not to kill connections unless we need to, but the minimum is more like 200 than 2,000. Gotcha. Makes sense. Um, that, oh, sorry. Sorry, if I may. The, um, the 2,000 is because we have the high, the high and low watermarks for the connection manager set at 1,500 and 2,000, I think. So, that, so when it gets up there, it will... So it will try to retain connections up to low watermark, and then when it gets above 2,000, it will prune them off. Um, it's not a good number for desktop use. Um, and if you download and install IPFS desktop, it actually comes with um, better connection manager defaults for, um, for, uh, for IPFS. Gotcha. Yeah. So I was asking selfishly for, you know, we are sort of typically connected to many thousands of peers. So I was curious kind of the performance metrics there and how that all worked. Yeah. I mean, part of the reason is right now we have like some uh, trouble with the DHC that will be fixed in the next release. Um, and like, if you already connected all the peers that might have the content, you just ask for the content that you get to basically bypass the DHC. That is not something about being connected to many peers. The problem yeah. is it's more resources. Uh, but like my own computer, I think I default to like, so like the actual default is not 2000, the actual default is uh, 900 and 600, 600 low, 900 high. Uh, my node is, well, I have to actually cut it out, but I think it's more like, yeah, mine I said at 7,000, or 7,200 is the high and 7,000 is the low. This is my laptop. It's actually not a problem <laughs> in practice, um, but that's because I'm not running a DHC server. Uh, so like if you're running DHC client mode, you can have like, can say, whatever, just connect as many peers as you need. And as long as you don't run out of valid scripts, it's usually fine. So for these hydras, are they, they're taking in DHT records. Um, you know, I've talked to, I think with you guys about in the past a little bit about how, you know, we just have too many provider records to announce in one cycle before, you know, that 12 hours is up. Will this still provide performance benefits even if like the records aren't announced and we have those records and are willing to serve them People just don't know about them yet. Uh, it will provide some performance benefits, but it's just like because these nodes will be highly connected, highly available, public IP, like fast machines, right? So your nodes will be able to like dial, like when they dial to an IDRA, they will like have a fast response cycle. Um, but, but that's like the optimization you get. Like you don't get like a smart optimization such as here's a bucket of records now distributed to yourself, uh, which would be just like a more efficient way to distribute records, especially for well-powered devices, like resources, oh, devices with less resources and so on. We, we have been discussing like ways to make provides faster. Um, 
yeah, like there is no specific design detail on the Hydra to provide that yet. Um, it, it might, it might just come down to like the, the simplest thing to do is to have an option um, where when an IPFS node notices that a user is adding a lot of data to just like bring up that, hey, like it seems like you're adding a lot of data and you're going to provide a lot of records. Would you like to use one of many other nodes available in the network to be the main, like the delegated nodes to like provide these records into the network rather than doing it yourself? Um, another another thing that okay so this is like one one thing another thing that either can also help you do the provides is because because they are so well connected when you do the the find peers call to find the best providers you will actually need to like do less hops in the network to find the the, the final destination for the records uh, so you can actually get another performance optimization there so there's like two two of them uh anything else i see that there is a hand from alan go ahead uh yeah i was just gonna say um the 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 great thing is if you put if you do a put and you happen to put to a hydra node because they are all linked via one belly you put you've put to many heads <laughs> already so like this um so you you've, you're effectively distributing your content way faster uh or making it more more easily findable by if you manage to put to a hydra head <laughs> But yeah, like for example, uh, I guess for your use case, Matt, uh, what you might be thinking is running your own Hydra and I am having your pinning servers to point to the Hydra nodes as like the place to put the records when you had a lot of data and like just ignore the rest of the network. Because then when the other nodes will be looking for those records, they will find the address that you host. And so for your nodes that are pinning the data, they just like have to do like one hop away, like just like put the record there. But like from the perspective of the network, the record will now be available in multiple locations simultaneously. So you can like get like really fast provides, but like it's a custom piece that like you integrate with your your own architecture. Um, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yep. yeah. <laughs> We're on the no, same. The, <laughs> like basically, the, the main thing here is that it like Hydra is designed to help prop up a network uh, when you have like problems with the DHC. Part of like the gut visceral at five release is also to like help reduce those problems with the DHC. And all of that together should just reduce the amount of time it takes to actually provide each individual record, which should make it faster to provide everything. Uh, the next step there is like parallel provides. Um, uh, th there's been a lot of work done on this. Um, uh, then there's like, yeah, batch provides, which are in theory possible and we've considered and may end up doing. We're like, instead of like doing a normal DHT query for each record, you kind of like, walk, <clears throat> basically you sort the records by where they would go in the DHT. You can just walk around the DHT giving batch updates to every single node. Uh, so like basically if you have more records than there are nodes in the DHT, this is a lot faster because they're like, you, instead of like making multiple requests to individual nodes, you just sort of like make single batch requests. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, like the, the key piece here will also be providing less, like only, only announcing certain pieces instead of other pieces, but that has other constraints. Yeah, the, the way I would see that is basically bulk announce a bunch of IDs to a Hydra, and then eventually the Hydra can be like, okay, they just go all to my little Hydra peers. That's kind of how I was thinking about it, but I won't take up any more time. So thanks for answering my question so far. Go and check out the repo and uh, like ping, ping us if you want, if you need more info. Yeah, I will probably be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a HTTP API as well, which you can tell it to get things. That's even more exciting. Anyway, that's for later. We gotta go. Thanks for the presentation, Alan. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for saving today. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.